so a lasting debate in the Dragon Ball community is about Vegeta's Super Saiyan God form. While this is a debate that can never be directly ended in one clear cut way because we've only seen it in the manga and not the anime, I'm gonna do my best to try to break it down for you guys. This wouldn't be the first form that Vegeta has skipped over in the anime as I'm sure you guys remember my Super Saiyan 3 Vegeta video. However, a common misconception about Vegeta is that he doesn't have the Super Saiyan God form period because he has never performed the ritual on himself. Now this isn't a power scaling video but we may mention a few multipliers once or twice. So today we're here to talk about how Vegeta would have achieved the form in another way and how Super Saiyan God works in itself so without further ado let's get started. First let's get into a bit of the lore. So the Super Saiyan God transformation was pretty much a dire necessity for Dragon Ball to continue in the fashion that Toriyama wanted. With Super Saiyan 2 being only a 2 times multiplier of Super Saiyan and Super Saiyan 3 being a 4 times multiplier of Super Saiyan 2, these transformations just wouldn't be enough. Even with the stacking of Kaioken to face the more large scale opponents that we would eventually see in Dragon Ball Super. So four years ago, something happened. Toriyama, with the release of the Dragon Ball Battle of Gods movie, introduced us two characters that would play a major role in the story here on out, as well as a concept that would change the course of Dragon Ball forever. When the Super Saiyan God transformation was first introduced, the power scale in Dragon Ball had taken a major leap due to the introduction of Beerus who had no problem whatsoever with a post Dragon Ball Z Super Saiyan 3 Goku. But obviously what brought Beerus to King Kai's planet and eventually Earth in the first place was the search for the Super Saiyan God. With all of his transformations being obsolete against Beerus and even fusion not being an option, Goku attempts the Super Saiyan God ritual and this is how the realm of God's power is first introduced to the Z Fighters. Now there are different variations of Super Saiyan God, this one in particular is referred to as the ritual Super Saiyan God transformation achieved when 5 Saiyans pour their hearts into one. In result being the red hair flame aura and slim physique saying we know as God Goku. The temporary power of this form even allowed him to compete with Beerus though he was only still using a rough percentage of his power at the time. When the transformation ran out Goku actually retained the power of the god form not the godly key. Now what does this mean exactly? Well in simplest terms Super Saiyan God is a key transformation from regular key to god key and the difference is extremely visible. Super Saiyan God is essentially a base form using God Key which would explain Goku's appearance. To further prove that Goku retained the power of the Super Saiyan God form and not the key, after he drops out of the form Piccolo, Gohan and the others can all sense Goku's energy again but Goku also states that he doesn't feel any different and didn't notice a loss of power. Beerus eventually confirms in himself that Goku has absorbed the power of the Super Saiyan God form which would in turn stack on the power of every transformation Goku would take on. And this is what is commonly called Saiyan Beyond God or God Like Saiyan. This is essentially the power that we see from Goku in his base form post Battle of Gods in Dragon Ball Super and is basically on par with Super Saiyan God. The major difference itself being the use of regular key and not God key and as I stated before yes other forms are able to be stacked upon this which would give Goku a much higher ceiling for growth later on and also attempt to keep his previous forms relevant a while longer as well. This is where a ton of misconception about the form stems from but now that that's out of the way let's move on. So with Goku's initial explanation of Super Saiyan Blue, he states that it is the ascension of a Super Saiyan God to a Super Saiyan. This would at least to imply that Super Saiyan God is a requirement to be able to achieve this form. God Key on top of the Super Saiyan transformation, making this a joint partnering of two different forms or a hybrid. Goku is essentially able to activate his Super Saiyan God form on top of his godlike Saiyan base form which we talked about earlier. Now this is presumably the variation of Super Saiyan God we'll see Vegeta use in the movie unless they decide to throw us a curveball of some sort but I don't see it happening. So how is Vegeta able to use this variation of Super Saiyan God in the first place? Well Goku himself states that Vegeta did in fact obtain the power of Super Saiyan Blue which can be broken down even further and you could say the power of the Super Saiyan God as well and he did so without anyone's help. This would in fact be confirmation that Vegeta obtained the power of the Super Saiyan God without the ritual completely by himself. His showing of the Super Saiyan Blue form along with the knowledge of God Key and how it is incorporated into Super Saiyan Blue would implicate Vegeta's possession of the Super Saiyan God form. This would take us into another prerequisite of Super Saiyan Blue as we witness Goku and Vegeta as they're training with Whis. As they're sparring, Whis notices that they're involuntarily letting Ki leap from their body as they fight so he can tell them to contain their Ki in their body so their opponent can't sense it and this demonstrates the first time we see Goku and Vegeta use God Ki of their own accord. 
Naturally, they're not able to control it though, so he sends them into another dimension filled solely with God Key, and it's so overwhelming that Goku and Vegeta are unable to move at first. Vegeta, naturally being the smarter of the two, recognizes fairly quickly that to be able to move freely in this realm of God Key, that they must raise their power while containing it within them under complete control, much like when they witnessed their first glimpse of Super Saiyan Blue prior. This would be the best explanation as to how these two were able to wield this power voluntarily as Vegeta himself even states in the presence of the great Monica that Super Saiyan Blue is in fact Super Saiyan God turning Super Saiyan which would be an implication by Vegeta that Super Saiyan God is in fact a requirement for Super Saiyan Blue. Now there is a little buzz about seeing Vegeta in his God form in the movie and I do think we will see him in this form but more than likely he'll be using the switching back and forth technique that we saw in the manga allowing him to attack and defend in blue while reducing the stamina consumption by switching to Super Saiyan God. I would even go as far to say and this is completely just my opinion my little headcanon that Super Saiyan God will play a bigger role than we think in the upcoming Broly movie. But anyway guys, that's about it for this one. Don't forget to leave a like if you guys enjoyed the video and maybe even consider this being the day you hit that red subscribe button. But anyway, let me know what you guys think down below. Have a great day and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye guys.